It's authentic. When we come to your school, we all in the stands with you. It's inspirational. Honeybees is more than just about the field show. It's about inspiring young women. It's groundbreaking. It was like, oh my gosh, there's a girl trying out for drum major, all this stuff. Da, 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 da. From the campus to the community, we cover everything HBCU. It's HBCU 101. What's up everyone and welcome to HBC 101. I am your host, Jaleel Thurman. HBC 101 is a show that will take you all around the world, give you the ins and outs of HBCUs and a little taste of the HBCU flavor. On today's episode, you guys are in for a show. We have a very special FAMU alum in the building and we're gonna show you a little of Claflin University's homecoming. But before we dive into that, let's see what's good in the hood with our HBCUs. Okay, thanks, Jalil. The big news this week, coming out of the SWAC again, but not on the field, not in the classroom, on your TV screen. Now, you guys are familiar with R&B sensation Lizzo. She was nominated for, what, eight Grammys this year? Well, she came out with a new music video this past week called Good As Hell, and it features the human jukebox from Southern University. Now, this video takes place on campus in Baton Rouge. It's during homecoming of 2019, and members of the band play a prominent role in this video. It's a really good look. If you need more information, we have an article about that at hbcugameday.com. Now, Lizzo made some other big news in the last couple of weeks with her, how shall we say, outfit attire <laughs> at the Lakers game. But as Jaleel says, we're not going to give them too much right now. There's other shows that will talk about Lizzo's uh, fashion choice. We'll stick with the jukebox. So a really good look uh, for Lizzo and for Southern University. All right, that's it for news. Let's get back to a very special guest this week here on HBCU 101. Jaleel. Few know him as dad. Some know him as a line brother but the world knows him as a world-renowned movie producer. However, to him, he cares more about impacting the lives along the way. HBC 101 is honored to sit down with Florida a and University alum, executive producer, CEO and founder of Will Packer Productions and Will Packer Media, Mr. Will Packer himself. Hey, what up, my What's brother? Up with you? How, How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Doing yeah. pretty good. I got Rattling Nation in the building. I'm Absolutely. feeling kind of good. All day. Listen, good. Your numbers just went up. I'm okay. not going to lie to you, man. You need to keep putting Rattlers on this show. I'm just going to tell you. That's how you're going to win, brother. Hey, say no more. Now, let's talk <laughs> HBCUs. Yeah, man. Now, Mr. Packer, your story of how you got the family is unique. You're from St. Petersburg, Florida. Yep. However, you want to go to Warden, yeah. study Ivy League. You want to study engineering at Warden. Yep. However, fam, you offered your full academic scholarship. You was yep. trying to like, nah, I'm not trying to go. She your dad done. said, listen, no, that's where you're going. He's an engineer. He's like, that's what we're doing. Yep. Take me through your four years at FAMU and what it was like being a Rattler. You know what? So it really starts, like you said, in the fact that I did not want to go there, right? right? Like there are people watching this telecast right now that have no interest in HBCU. I was one of them. Right. And Honestly, it was a lot of young naivete and arrogance. Okay. I had always been the black guy in the all-white environment who excelled being that guy, right? Okay. And so I had no interest in being in an all-black environment where I wasn't going to stand out. Okay. And I felt like, you know what? I'm Ivy League quality. You know what I mean? I got the test scores. I got the grades. Like, why am I going to an HBCU? So I was very resistant. It's important to understand that because I came in with my little St. Pete swag, my little, you know, the one black kid in the AP classes, my high test scores. Fam, you didn't care about none of that. Right. None of that. I'm telling you, I walked on the yard, they was like, bro, you're a corny, go sit down. Wow. Like I had to get my weight up, you know what I mean? <laughs> because I was coming from a very different world. Right. My four years were some of the most important in my life, without a doubt, hands down, brother. I'll be honest with you. It was so formative for me, right? right. It was important for me because I really got in touch with my culture and my people in a way that I just hadn't had the opportunity to do before. Mm -hmm. And I had a great upbringing, you know? Mm -hmm. I had two great parents. They told me I could be anything I wanted to be. And I really bought into that. I believed it. But it wasn't until I got to FAMU that I realized what it was that my full potential would be. And mm -hmm. that was as somebody who looked like me excelling in an arena where there are not a lot of people like me, mm -hmm. but coming in with the confidence that I can do anything. So, man, my four years were, um, was a lot of work. I was an engineering major. Right. 
Um, but it was a lot of fun too. You know, fam, you, we get it in. So I, uh, I definitely met, left my mark on the yard. <laughs> okay. Now, but your, ex your experience at an HBC was unique. Yes. You know, in 94, about 25 years ago, you and your line brother, Rob Hardy, founded Rainforest Films in which you guys produced and directed your first film, yep. Chocolate City. True now, but Chocolate City is unique for two reasons. One, you guys got the support of the school. You got the support of the Pan Hill. You got the support of local people. Yep. Raised $20,000. Also had some equipment donated. Yep. But when you finished, you left the front row empty yeah. for <laughs> Spike Lee or Oprah or some people in Hollywood to come and nobody came. That's right. Talk to me about that whole experience of creating Chocolate City and what that kind of did for your eyes and seeing your career. Yeah, so Chocolate City, you're absolutely right. Chocolate City was that first movie we did when we knew nothing about Hollywood. We wanted to make life about the black college experience, mm -hmm. and we did. And we thought that you make a movie, right? You work hard, you go, you get the lights, you get the camera, you get the actors, you make a movie, you send to Hollywood, that's it. Like, I'm about to go buy Benz at a house. Like, what's up? <laughs> We sent our little movie to Hollywood and nobody cared. Nobody even gave us the courtesy of a response to our little screeners and invitations that we were sending out to try to get people to even watch the movie. As you told the story, we did the world premiere of our little movie, Chocolate City, right there on FAMU's campus. Now, one thing I will say is that we never dreamt small. We always dream big, always. And that is something I encourage people to do. I don't care what it is. I don't care what piece of content you're trying to create, company you're trying to build, platform you're trying to dream big. Whatever you got, make that the absolute best it can be. And we did that. And so we had our little movie, we had our world premiere, we made everybody get dressed up. These college students now, right, 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 we right. made everybody go rent tuxes oh, and go wow. rent ball gowns and, and nice dresses <laughs> and stuff. And I had saved the whole front row here. And it was funny because you had people who were like in the movie, who had family come in town who couldn't get in. They didn't have a seat. They was like, why are these seats roped up? I was like, well, listen, I invited the chairman of Sony and the chairman of Paramount and you. They said, bro, none of those people are RSVP. I said, yeah, but what if they come? What if a fleet of private jets show up in Tallahassee? You want me to be turning them away? So I had this front row saved. And of course, none of those people came. But every other seat in the auditorium was filled. And it taught me about niche marketing. It taught me about understanding the value of your audience because I realized I'm not making my movies for that front row. I'm making my moves for everybody else. And everybody else in that theater loved it. And, and that is what I'm sure has driven you for the last two decades to make different content. And even drove you to take that leap of faith to move to Atlanta. Yeah. We ain't gonna give them too much right now. We're okay. gonna give them when we get back. Okay. It's Jalil, it's Mr. Will Packer, it's HBC 101. We'll be right back. Coming up next on HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. I am your host, Jalil Thurman, and I have Mr. Packer here with me. Rattler Nation is still here, oh, alive. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> come on. Shout out to the Rattlers. <laughs> Mr. Packer. Yeah, brother. Your life after college experience is similar to many. All right, you took a leap of faith in which you moved to Atlanta and you graduated Madam Cum Laude. I did. And, in engineering. In engineering. I so you could have got a job anywhere. You could have did, did anything. I could have. But you decided to chase a dream. Yeah. And you were a paper boy. Yeah. <laughs> from yeah. 3 in the morning, 6 a.m., delivering yeah. papers every day, leaving the rest of the day for the grind. That's right. Not only did you start there, but then you also created movies like Twa and then The Gospel and then Stomp Yard kind of was like. Poof, poof, to yeah. crazy. Yeah. Tell me, take me through the experience. What were some of the things that you would never change and then some of the things you might do differently? You know, I'm glad you brought up the, the, the humble part, the grind part, because a lot of people, you know, they see me now and uh, they look at the red carpets or the, or the resume, you know, the movies and, and the material things. But the reality is that to get there, and I know there are people that are watching this show that can identify, to get there before you can have that success, Listen, one of the things I pledge, you pledge, you know, there's a philosophy that, you know, in order for you to jump as high as possible, you got to get low, right? If you don't crouch down, you're not going to get high, right? And so I needed that time to really struggle and to really build a foundation of character for myself. And so, yeah, there were years, right? I graduated in 96 from FAMU. Uh, Stomp the Yard didn't come out until like 2006. That's like 10 years of the grind. Now, I had some smaller movies in between, but that was my first big one. 
That in between looked like me getting up at 3 a.m., filling up my little Honda Civic with Atlanta Journal Constitution newspapers back when people were, you know, still reading the newspaper. I would fold them up, put them in the back, 3 a.m., get out, go. Rain or shine, don't matter. People want their papers. I will go and deliver my newspapers, right, all over Atlanta. And I was done typically by about 6 a.m. And what that allowed me to do was have my whole day, like you said, to grind. My whole day, I could be the filmmaker, the wannabe filmmaker, right? I could take calls. I could talk to L.A. I could act like I was doing it full time. But you know what? At night, you know what I mean? Everybody else kicking it. You know, typically the cues. You know how they do. So they want to party all night, you know. About 1, 1.30, one where the after spot. Not old Will Packer. I got to go home, try to grab me an hour, because I knew I had to go to work. Um, and the other thing I did was I actually not just delivered newspapers. I also sold newspapers, right? Here's another part of the grind that, that people don't always respect. Whatever it is you're doing, give it 110%, because you never know where it's going to lead and how it's going to pay off, right? So I would, in the afternoons, I took a second job when things really got tough. They would drop you off in the neighborhood, and you had to knock on doors to try to sell newspaper subscriptions. Mm -hmm. You ain't never tried <laughs> to do nothing hard till you knock on a black person's door, and they don't know, and you trying to sell them something. Brother, <laughs> did you know what it did? And got my sales weight up, okay. right? It got me to the point where I was fearless when I would go, knock on you, how you doing, sir? Let me talk to you. Let me tell you what I'm doing. I got an amazing deal. Nope. <laughs> door slam. Okay, next door. Got to take that note. Keep it moving. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? Nope, don't call the police. I'm going. Okay, next door. <laughs> oh, nope, don't put the dog on me. Okay, okay, next door. That door, I got the sale, right? I had all them no's, but I got that one. I didn't give up. I'm still using that mentality to this day. To this day, I'm still using the mentality of that matter how many no's I get, I got to still knock on that door. I got to have my pitch. I got to be ready to sell. I do that when I go and pitch Girls Trip and pitch Ride Along and pitch whatever movie it is that I'm doing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to get told no. Even I, even Will Packer gets told no, right? But I still got to be like, you know what? That yes is coming and keep it moving. So I learned that from the grind when I didn't have, you know, two nickels to rub together. And I was just um, trying to figure out if I had wasted my time getting that engineering degree. But I had a dream, man. I had a passion. And so that's one thing I like to tell people. Because for me, my story is as much about those lean years yeah. and those years. And like I said, it's probably about 10 of them, right? This wasn't just like, you know, a semester or, you know, six, seven months. Like, this was a grind. But ultimately, I always knew if I didn't give up, then it wasn't over, right? right? A man can be defeated. But his story is not over until he quits. A man can be defeated, but a man is not finished until he quits. Yeah, no, I feel that. So I want to dive into what's next for Will Packer. Okay. But we'll do that when we get back. All right, let's do it. It's HBC 101. It's Jalil. It's Will Packer. Stay tuned. Coming up next on HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBC 101. It's Jalil. It's Mr. Packer. Mr. Packer. Yeah, brother. Will Packer Productions yes. and Will Packer Media. It's two different things. People don't know. Right. One is more for digital. One right. is more for film. Right. What's next? Ooh, you know what? It's an expansion on what we have. Um, okay. The reason that I have those different companies is because I didn't want to be the type of company that was only focused on doing one thing. Okay. Right? Because in today's environment, when you're creating content, you have to be able to create content for people the way they're going to consume it, okay. right? Otherwise, you're going to get left behind. And so for me, I didn't want to be just the film company. And because when somebody brings me an idea, I would only think of it as a movie, right? It's like if you and I have a hat company, right? That's all we do. We make hats. And somebody brings us an amazing design for a shoe. We trying to fit it on our head. We like, this is trash, right? right. Somebody else goes and creates the next Nike. I didn't want to be that. Okay. I wanted to have a company also that, like Will Packer Media does digital, television, scripted, unscripted, that if I have an idea or somebody brings me an idea, or I get my hands on a, a piece of amazing IP, intellectual property, that I can then exploit it across whatever medium makes sense for that property. Okay. So that's why I have the different companies. When I think about what's next, I think about... You know, I have, um, I've been very blessed and had a lot of success on the feature side. I want to continue that, you know, continue to make movies that are appealing to broad audiences. I want to have um, my first kind of big television success. We've had success. I'm on second seasons of stuff, okay. you know, 
but I don't know that I've had yet that kind of defining thing in television okay. in the way that I have in film. So I want to do that. Um, and I'm looking into everything in between, man, from audio to digital to stuff that maybe isn't out there yet. I want to make sure that I'm not only thinking about this game in one particular way. I want to be thinking about it in the way that the consumers are consuming. That way I can be, I can be malleable. I can be yeah. quick. I can be nimble. You know what I mean? I don't want to be a company that is like, wow. this is what we do. This is the way we do it because somebody's going to pass me. I'm going to yeah. miss opportunities like that. So now let's talk I Got Five on it. Right. Now, it's a game that everybody plays that I come on the show. Brother, so I don't know what you're about to offer me <laughs> with I Got Five. I know you're a member of Omega Sci Fi, but I'm <laughs> now because we like to stay sharp, brother. I'm just. Uh... <laughs> but, uh, I Got Five on it. Yeah. It's a series of questions okay. that I ask you this or that, and you choose who or what you may have five on. Okay. Real simple. All right. All right, let's talk during Bayou Classic. Who is more exciting to watch? To watch the whole from the whole game from the bands to the football game, Southern University mm -hmm. or Grambling? Southern. Okay. I got five on Southern. Okay. Listen, no shade to Grambling uh -huh. at all, uh -huh. but I just feel like you know Southern is a little more polished in the way that they roll. You okay. know what I mean? I have no idea what the records are in terms of the the football game, like mm -hmm. who's won more, um, and you know uh, HBCU grad Doug Williams, the first coach to ever win. I mean, the first player, first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Is uh is a good is like a mentor of mine. Okay. You know, he's amazing. So I got respect for Grambling because those are his roots. But the reality is that for some reason I feel like Southern has just got a little bit more of a polish to what they do. Okay. I just feel like they they got it together wow. a little bit more and it shows whether you're talking about the band, the game, or in between. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Is that now, the right answer? Hey, hey, whichever one you think is the right <laughs> answer is the right answer. <laughs> Let's talk Greeks. Okay. Now, you're alpha. Yes. I'm a Q. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. But <laughs> just, just try to get through it. Try to work through it. Man. You can still be successful. There's a couple of y'all. You know, Tom did well. Tom Joyner. Yeah. Steve Harvey. Yeah. Usually in radio. You yeah. ever thought about radio? Man, That's kind of where the Q is by success. <laughs> we are everywhere. You know that, right? I'm just saying. Whatever. Go ahead with your question. <laughs> now, let's talk Gr Greeks at Bethune Cookman. Yes. Or Savannah State. Who you got five? Ooh. Here's the thing. I'm going to give it to you straight. So, those are both schools that wish they were family. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I, I know the BCU folks well. I knew them when they were BCC. Um, they're on the beach, right? Okay. They in Daytona. Savannah is near the beach, Savannah right, State, right? right. right? Not, too far. not too far. BCU, the thing about them is that, I tell you, it's a level of country that you get with Florida. I'm from Florida, okay. right? So these are my people. I know right. there's a level of country in Florida uh -huh. that's different than that Georgia country. You just call two <laughs> country schools. Listen, love them. <laughs> Amazing people. But you went there with both of them. So if I got to go Greeks at either one of them, okay. and I, and I got to have five on, <laughs> on my brothers and sisters from them uh, country schools, have I said? I'm going to go Savannah State. Okay. I'm going to go Savannah State. I feel like I might survive that one before. Because BCU is no telling. Listen, man, they wild. it's Daytona. You know what I mean? They're not focused enough. Last one, tailgates. Yeah. yeah. Spellhouse or South Carolina State University? Spellhouse. I mean, okay. yeah, they just, they have the advantage of the fact that, you know, it's a little bit like Howard and that they're in a major market. So they take advantage of the fact that everybody comes. Now, there's a downside to that, right? Because the thing about Howard Homecoming is it's almost like too Hollywood, too big, too DC, yeah. and not enough like Howard, you yeah. know? Spellhouse has a lot of Atlanta to it, but it it's, just it It still give you that. It still give you that that flavor, man. It's a good it's a good tailgate at, at Spellhouse. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have give to check it, it out. I'm gonna have to check yeah, it out. Yeah, you gotta check that out. Well, yes. Mr. Packer, thank you for coming on the show. Brother, it's I'm been honest. a pleasure to have you. We dive into a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and yeah, I appreciate you for telling your good story. Good questions, too, man. I appreciate you for yeah. telling your story. Thank you, fam. Thank you, thank you. It's HBC 101. It's Jalil. It's Mr. Packer. We'll be right back. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Homecomings at HBCUs, one of a kind. Let's go ahead and check out Claflin University. Raymond, it's homecoming. But you the one who kind of orchestrated, kind of put everything together. How are you feeling about homecoming? Homecoming's going crazy. Uh, it's my third year at Claflin, and I've never seen the people interact so much with the crowd and everything like that. Events been packed out. Okay. People been going crazy. The spirit, the energy. It's just homecoming season around here. 
is turned, but I'm here with Miss Homecoming herself tonight. It's Homecoming. The atmosphere, the vibe here is is up there. What's it been like all week? All week, the energy has just been there. Of course, our featured artist this week is none other than Miss Meg Thee Stallion. So, of course, the students, the alumni, everyone's excited to see what the hot girl is going to bring to the hilltop. <laughs> You used to be a student at Clifford. You was in the stands. You was a fan of the artists that were here. Now, people are your fans. You're performing at your own alma mater, your homecoming. Talk to me what's going through your mind. Let's talk about it. Honestly, I feel like it's such a blessing. Like, I remember being in the stands. I remember late nights just dreaming and, you know, hoping that one day my school would book me. And now we're here, so dreams really do come true. Okay, okay. Now, talking about dreams, how did Claflin kind of help prepare you to where you at now? Man, there's nothing like the Claflin Confidence. Anybody who comes through the school and graduates understands what the Claflin Confidence is. And honestly, you already know what it is when you come through, period. Okay, period, point blank. I know you got some stuff cooking. You probably got a new single on the way. Talk to me about it, what's happening? You already know I got the new single coming, That Ain't Sis. You already know it's about to be fire. That ain't sis, that, that ain't sis. You can miss me with that bullshit. Now, what has been so special or what is so special about Claflin University? Well, you know, for me to leave my past residency, it had to be special. Claflin is the number nine ranked HBCU in the nation okay. amongst 100 plus HBCUs. When I say number nine, it ain't a lot of others ranked higher than us, man. So when you think academically, personally, socially and spiritually, Claflin is the top. And so I'm excited to have come lead this outstanding institution okay. with a rich history, man. Okay. 150 years. I'm only the ninth president in 150 years. That tells you about how great this institution is. So yeah. for me, I'm excited to stand on the shoulders of giants and lead it to the next level. We got a new president, a lot of new things. So we want, you know, this to be the foundation for the years to come. So starting off with Meg, we each year have a big artist and doing big artists making this really like the spot for other students to be at, for other HBCUs to be at, to be okay. the mecca for South Carolina. Okay. We got a certain kind of culture, we got a special kind of feel, we got a special kind of talent that you really can't get anywhere else, within Orangeburg, within the state, or within other HBCUs. Okay. And that's, you know, that's part of what puts us in the top 10, that part of what makes our students so happy and so engaged. That's it for today's episode of HBC 101. Special thanks to Mr. Will Packer for coming by the show. For the entire crew, I am Jalil Thurman. We'll see you next time.